Adventure Ahead. This week, a stirring tale of young, unknown participant in the Revolutionary War. A fantasy of history by Stephen Vincent Benet. It is a story of a tooth for Paul Revere. And now... Adventure Ahead. There was talk of trouble in the air in April 1775, and all of Massachusetts colony was trembling with whispers, rumors, talk of revolution. There's nothing we can do against such tyranny. This taxation, this oppression, free men can never live this way. There is no hope unless we plan to fight. Organize, join the minute men. Yes, it was enough to make men think. That day in April 1775, to wonder if revolt was right or wrong. One, three, four. That'll be one shilling sixpence for the seeds, Master Butterwick. All right. There you are. One and six. Hope you have good luck with your planting this spring, Lodge. I hope so too, Mr. Thorpe. Don't know any farmer around Lexington that deserves to have good crop. It isn't you. Losing your folks last year, having to run the farm all by yourself. No easy job for a young boy. Keeps me busy, all right. Um, uh, was there something else you wanted, Lige? Well, yes. Got anything for a toothache? Ah, a toothache? Uh-huh. This one here. Hmm. Afraid I haven't a thing to kill a tooth pain, Lige. Expect you ought to see the barber, Billy Murphy. He can fix your tooth. Well, I hope so. It's a terrible aching. Don't know when I've had such trouble and pain. These are troubled times, Master Butterwick. Huh? What do you mean, Mr. Thorpe? What trouble? About the grievances of the colonies. Oh, that. Mostly talk. There'll come a time for action. And we'll need every man we can muster, every volunteer. And we'll need you, Lodge Butterwick. Me? Yes, Lodge. But, but, Mr. Thorpe, I I just don't care about fighting. I won't have time for... Most everybody in Lexington's joined up with us, Lodge. They found time. If your father was alive, he'd bring his gun and join us, too. I know he would. Maybe. you still got his old flintlock, haven't you? Uh-huh. And you can fire it. Tolerable good. Then won't you reconsider, Lodge? We'll need every man we can muster. No, Mr. Thorpe. I just can't see my way clear to join your Minutemen. Well, suit yourself, Lodge. But someday I'm hoping you'll be part of us. A part of the new growing tree. Huh? New growing tree? That's a symbol, Lodge. A growing tree and a new republic. You'll see what I mean one of these days. Well, maybe so, but I don't quite understand what all the trouble's about myself. I'm too busy with my farm. Besides, I just don't see no sense to fighting. Hello, Lige. You want your hair cut? No, Mr. Murphy. It looks like you could use one. No, I come about my tooth. Oh. Got me a bad tooth, Mr. Murphy. Hurts me something fierce. Well, sit down here in me chair, Lige, and I'll have a look at it. It's been a bother me some time, just aching and painin'. Hmm, well, just drop your head back a little. Yeah, yeah there, there, that's it. Hmm. See anything in there? Huh? You, you say anything? Yeah, afraid you've got a real bad tooth there, Lige. Which one is it? Yeah, you've got a bad one, all right. It's on the side, right, right here. Oh, sure hurts like it was bad. Hmm. I expect that tooth ought to come out, Lige. You do? Mm-hmm. Well, well, then, pull her out. <laughs> well, I, I could pull her out, all right, but she's got long roots, and she's going to leave an awful big gap when she's gone. She will? Yes, you... You know what you ought to do, Lige? What? Well, what you really need, though it's taken away me business to tell you, is one of these here artificial teeth to go into the hole after she's pulled out. An artificial tooth? Yes. Why, that's flying in the face of nature. Oh, well, no, Lige, I wouldn't say that. Them silver teeth is all the go these days, and Lexington ought to be right up with the times. Well... Ah, uh, it would do me good to see you with a silver tooth. It would indeed. Might do you good, but 
What about me? Well, you'll like it, Lige. It'll feel fine, and it's real silver. Well, suppose I did want one. How on Tucker will I ever get one here in Lexington? Huh? Well, you might have to ride up to Boston for it. To Boston? But it'll be worth the trouble. And I know just the man to help you. Well, it seems like I saw that paper notice around here somewhere. Let me see. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, yes. Here, here it is. What's that, Mr. Murphy? It's a notice in the paper from a man in Boston. Makes them teeth. Oh? Who is he? A silversmith. Name of Revere. Paul Revere. Never heard of him. Uh, he comes through here once in a while. Hmm. Uh, uh, listen to this, Lige. Whereas many persons these days are so unfortunate as to lose their forty, uh, that you, Lige. Uh-huh. Uh, which is to their detriment, not only in looks, but in speaking. This is to inform all such persons that they may have defective teeth replaced with artificial ones that look just as well as natural teeth. Well, my goodness. Ah, there's your chance, Lige. Hmm, sounds good enough. But what's it going to cost? Oh, I know, Revere. He wouldn't charge a muff, and it'd be worth it, Lige. Well, in for a penny, in for a pound. This tooth is there driving me mad. It's got to come out. Reckon I'll be able to find him? Oh, yes. If you lose your way in Boston, just ask anybody for Paul Revere. Expect most everybody has heard of him. <laughs> Even the Tories. The Tories? Revere's a pretty big bug in the Sons of Liberty. Oh. Well, I don't care to be mixing him with politics. But I allow how the main thing is to get this tooth fixed today if I can. Reckon I'll ride up to Boston and find this Mr. Paul Revere. <laughs> Excuse me, please. Huh? Could you help me, please? Why, certainly, if I can. Don't know my way around Boston very well. Oh? It seems like I've spent most all afternoon trying to find a special man to take care of my toothache. Oh, you're a stranger, eh? Yes, sir. I'm from Lexington. Oh, Middlesex man. Uh-huh. I had you figured wrong, stranger. What do you mean? I thought I had you figured for a Tory. <laughs> a Tory? Oh, no, not me. I'm no politician. Never was one. But you're belonging to the Liberty Party, aren't you? Well, yes and no. What do you mean, yes and no? It's one or t'other. I mean, uh, I mean, I don't know for sure. Well, you better decide soon, stranger. Huh? There's thunder in the air and trouble brewing. The time is close at hand. Won't be long. It won't be long. Yes, but, 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 but wait. Now oh, I wonder what he meant by that. <laughs> Yes, young man, you wanted something? Well, just some information. Oh? I'm a stranger here in Boston. Don't know my way around. Why, well, I'd be glad to help you, my friend, if I'm able to. Thank you. You're a stranger from the West, perhaps? I've got a farm near Lexington. Oh, Lexington. And you are a rebel, I presume? Me? Oh, no. Uh, you're, you're not? Well, no. <laughs> I'm... Certainly pleased to find another true-hearted loyalist in this pestilent, rebellious city. Loyalist? Well, now, I, I don't know about that. What do you mean? I came to Boston mainly to get my tooth fixed, not to talk politics. You see, I'm looking for a Mr. Paul Revere, and if I haven't Did had... you say Paul Revere? Why, why, yes. What's the matter? What you grinning about? So it's Paul Revere you want, my clever young friend from the country. Uh -huh. Would you help me? Of course. I'd be glad to tell you how to find him. All right. Just go up to the first red-coated soldier that you see and ask the way. Will, will they tell me? Of course. But you'll have to give the password first. The password? Yes. First you say to the soldiers, any lobsters today? And then you ask about Revere. But... Uh, but why talk about lobsters? Well, you see, my friend, the soldiers all wear red coats, and they like being called lobsters. Oh, they do? <laughs> yes. Try it, my friend, and you'll find out. <laughs> Well, 
Come on, huh? Mr. Revere, Mr. Revere. Yes, madam? The silver you made for me. Oh, the silver. Why, I don't understand. I paid for the very best. I wanted a beautiful service set, something I could show my friends with pride. And what have you given me? Why, madam, the best of which I'm capable. I worked on the set for almost two months. Oh, it's silver if you choose. But it's so plain and simple as a, as a picket fence. Simple? Plain? You pay me high compliments. Compliments, indeed. I'm sending it all back tomorrow. Why, there isn't so much as a single lion or a unicorn on the cream jug. And I told you I wanted the sugar bowl simply covered with silver crowns. You've given me something in, as plain and as bare as, as the hills of New England. I have. And what's more, I won't stand for it, Mr. Revere. I'll send to England instead, to London. Then send away, madam. We're making new things in this country. New men, new silver. Even, perhaps, a new nation. Indeed. Simple and bare as the hills and rocks of New England. Graceful as the boughs of her elm trees. If my silver were only like that. <laughs> and as for you, madam... Now, now, you look here, young man. You can have your lions and unicorns and crowns and your nonsense of bad ornamentation. What? You can have your imported taste and your imported manners. Well, my word. I was never so insulted in my life. My word. Silver crowns and a sugar bowl. <laughs> William. Oh, William. Yes, sir. Come up front, William. Yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Revere? No word yet from Dr. Warren? No, sir, nothing yet. Strange. Should have had some word from him by now. I wonder if there's something in the wind. Mm, it's getting dark, William. Yes, sir. Might as well put up the shutters. We're not likely to have any more customers tonight. No, sir, I'll put them up. I wonder why I haven't heard from Dr. Warren. Hmm. Mr. Revere. Oh, Mr. Revere. Hmm? What's up, William? There's a man, sir, running down this side of the street. Redcoat's after him. Oh, must be a patriot. Look, sir, through the shutter. Hmm. Yes, indeed. A lot of soldiers after him. Here, fling open the door, quickly. Yes, sir. Here he comes. Here, quickly, in here. Oh, oh thank you. Thank Flash you. Flash the door, William. Yes, sir. Been chasing me most a mile. Well, that's something. Here they come. Oh, you saved me then, all right. Thank you. There's nothing least I could do. Aren't we all hounded and chased by the redcoats these days? Huh? Excuse me just a minute. Uh, William. Yes, sir? I think you'd better run over to Dr. Warren's house, see if he has a message for me. Use the back way. Yes, sir. Well, now that you've had your breath, sir, may I help you? Maybe I can. I hope so. My name's Lodge Butterwick, and I'm looking for a Mr. Paul Revere around these parts of Boston. Well, it is a surprise, Master Butterwick. Huh? My name happens to be Paul Revere. Well, I'm glad of that. I tell you, Mr. Revere, I, I had a hard time of it here in Boston trying to find you. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, but now that you found me, how may I serve you? Well, the barber sent me. The barber? Uh, you see, it's about my tooth. Oh. It, it's this way. This tooth's been acting up real bad lately, so this morning I went in to see Billy Murphy. He's the barber in at Lexington. Lexington? And he said that... You from Lexington? Well, yes, and Mr. Murphy said... Were that... you there this morning? I just said I was, and the barber told me... Never mind me. the barber. Huh? Mr. Hancock, Mr. Adams, were they still at Parson Clark's? Oh, well, yes, I reckon I... I reckon I saw him when I rode by this morning on my way up here. Thank goodness. They're still there. Still at Lexington. Why, well, I suppose so. Why? The British ready to march and conquer tonight. Won't be long. Can't be long. Tell me, Mr. Butterwick. Yes, sir? Did you see many soldiers as you came to my shop tonight? See them? Well, they chased me all the way from Boylston. I know, I know, but were there others? Did you see any more? Oh, there's a whole parcel of them up by the common with guns and flags and everything, all lined up in their red coats ready to march. Why? Master Butterwick, I can't thank you enough for what you've told me tonight. It gives me courage. Told you? Huh? You're a very shrewd observer, and you've done me and the colony as an invaluable service. Well... Well, that's nice. But about this tooth of mine, Mr. Revere, <laughs> I just got it. <laughs> You're a stubborn young man, Master Butterwick. But all the better. I like stubborn men. Wish we had more of them. Now, what about you two? It'll have to be drawn out. Been aching something awful. And uh, I want to get a nice new silver one to stop up the hole. Well, I've made lots of artificial teeth, all right. But drawing them out is hardly my trade, young man. Oh, it, it isn't? But one good turn deserves another. You've helped me. I'll do my best to help you. Oh, thank you, sir. Uh, just sit yourself here in this chair, young man. 
would help a mite. This draft. In the morning, you'll feel more like having your tooth drawn. There. Just drink this right down, Master Butter. It's only medicine. All right. Whatever you say. <laughs> Watch this something. Mr. Revere? It'll help pain some. <sighs> Seems to be better already. You can go to an inn for the night, and then in the morning we'll find a tooth drawer. All right, if you say so. It might bother you some later tonight. I think I'd better give you a box of liniment. Ought to be a box or something. Hey, now. You've got quite a cabinet here, Mr. Revere. Yes, I have, Master Butterwick. Oh, uh, what's in that little pink bottle over there? Oh, little experiment of mine. I call that the essence of Boston. It's like perfume, but there's a good deal of the east wind in it. Essence of Boston? Well, I never. The barber told me you were a wizard, Mr. Revere. With genuine magic, I suppose. Oh, of course. Hey, here's your liniment in this box. Uh-huh. And here's a little box you might like to see. Made of wood and silver. My goodness. Just finished making it today. Oh, you did? Pick it up. See? That's my own design on the cover. A growing tree and an eagle fighting a lion. Well, a, a growing tree. It's awful pretty. You see those stars around the edge? Thirteen of them. Well. You make a very attractive design with those stars. Say, for a new country. Oh, it's a most wonderful wooden silver box. But what's in it? What's in it? Hmm. Why, what's in the air around us? Gunpowder, war. And the making of a new nation. That's what. You mean... You mean that this here revolution folks keep talking about is in here? Right in there. Right in that little wooden silver box. And fighting? And war? All in there, just waiting to be let out. But it's locked. Of course. Time's not ripe yet to open it. Oh. When the time comes, the box can be opened. It'll have to be opened. And, and then there'll be a revolution? Yes, then there'll be a revolution. Well, well, I never... It must be my boy coming back. Huh? That's you, William? Mr. Revere, Mr. Revere. You see Dr. Warren? Yes, sir, he gave me this message for you. Said to run fast as I could. We have it. Troops marching on conquered Lexington tonight. Seize supplies. My boots, William. Yes, sir. Get my horse ready. Yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Revere. Is something wrong? Wrong? No. I think everything's going to be all right. You'll have to leave. I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. Take your box here and hurry, please. I have much to do tonight. Yes, sir. Well, well, good night, Mr. Revere. I'll help you with the door. Good night. Good night. Well, now what could make him stir around so much this time of night? <laughs> Most likely nothing. Yes, young man. Uh, you want a room? Uh, yes, I do. I had a hard time finding an inn open in Boston this time of night. Oh, we're always open here. Uh-huh. Well, I'll be needing a nice quiet room so as I can sleep late. Got a bad tooth and I want to... Say. Huh? Uh, what's the matter? This box. Here in my pocket. What about it? It's not the liniment box. Liniment box? I must have took the wrong box. This is the wooden silver box. Mr. Revere's own box. I don't see how I that... took this one by mistake. Oh, my goodness. Is there something wrong? Wrong? Do you know what's inside this box? No. What? There's gunpowder and war and the makings of a new nation. That's what. Who says so? Why, Paul Revere himself. I... I'm almost afraid to touch it. Are you sure about, uh, about what's in it? Oh, I'm sure enough. Why, I can hold it up to my ear like this and almost hear the revolution inside. You can? Well, almost. Reckon Mr. Revere will want this all right. You're going to take it back? Why, of course I've got to take it back. If I was to open this little box now, why, there'd, there'd be war all around us. I've got to take this to Paul Revere tonight. <laughs> Mr. Revere? Is there any 
anybody here? Well, I heard him talk about a Dr. Warren. Reckon I could find him. Hey, you! What do you want down there? Waking honest people up this hour of the night. I'm looking for Mr. Paul Revere. He's not here. Who are you? Friend of his. I got a little box here for him. Know where he is? Gone to Charlestown. Across the river? Uh-huh, rode right down in his horse. Took a boat two hours ago. No, sir. Don't get any boat from me. There was a crazy man along here an hour or so ago. There was? My husband rode him over. He did? And you know what that man did? No, ma'am. What? Made my husband tear up my best petticoat. Just enough for the hours. So they wouldn't splash when they rode by that man of war out there. Was his name Revere? I reckon. Something like that. Well, well, can I get a boat somewhere? Don't know, lad. Sell it down to the wharf might row you over. Why, Fur, you in such a hurry, I've stranger. got to find this man, Mr. Paul Revere. Uh, couldn't it wait till morning? Might be too late, then. I got a little box here for him. And he's just got to get it tonight before it's too late. I'm Lige Butterwick. I just come across the river from Boston, and I must get me a horse. What for you want a horse? I'm trying to catch up with a friend of mine, Paul Revere. Paul Revere? Well, why don't you say so? He come through here and got a horse from me about two hours ago. He did? You can find him if you ride fast. But, but I have no horse. Come on down to the barn with me. If you're a friend of Paul Revere, I'll give you a horse. Paul Revere? Yes, ma'am. Why, of course he's been through here. He rode off that away. What you want, young man? Sorry to bother you, middle of the night, but I saw your lamp lit. Uh, I reckon all Middlesex County's wake tonight. You looking for the rest of the men? Well, I'm looking for... Well, you they started off with the guns about two hours ago. We'll have to hurry. They went off towards Lexington. <laughs> Reckon I've lost him, I guess. Everybody said he'd come this way, but I can't find him. Uh, almost morning. I may have Lexington up ahead. Stop there! Halt! Who goes there? Huh? Boy, it's, it's me. Who's me? Why, me? Lige Butterwick? Oh, hello, Lige. Didn't see you for the dark. Mr. Thorpe, what you doing up so early in the morning? I was just going to ask you that, Lige. The time has almost come to plant that new growing tree. Did you come to help us, Lige? Well, I, uh, I don't know. I'm looking for Mr. Paul Revere. Revere? You seen anything of him, Mr. Why, Thorpe? Why, of course. He's with us. He just arrived. Well, well, where is he? Where is he, then? Well, straight along the road, up over the hill by those elm trees. You can't miss him. Thank you, Mr. Thorpe. Oh, 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 Mr. Revere? Mr. Revere? Butterwick. Hello, Mr. Revere. Oh. I, I thought I'd never find you. Well, you did a good job. Followed me all the way, eh? Uh-huh. I uh, had to be on time for my appointment. Appointment? For my tooth. Oh, but I've got something here for you. More important than my tooth. Your little box. Well, my little wooden silver box. Yes, sir. You see, I... I took it by mistake, sir. I, uh, I didn't mean to. Well, that's all right. You didn't need to. I just had to hurry. What do you mean? Well, like you said... The whole revolution's right inside this box. I, I just had to bring it to you as soon as I could. Oh. I begin to see it all now. The, the story I told you about the box. You believed it. Why, why of course. It's, it's true, isn't it? About the revolution and liberty being inside this box? Of course it is, young man. Fortunately, you're just in time. Just in time? You mean... You mean it's about to happen? Getting light, I think you can see. Look up along the hill there. Behind every rock and tree and fence. Waiting. Waiting. Why, men. There's lots of men. The minute men, Master Butterwick. Those are the minute men? Yes. But, but over there, across the green. It's bright red. The redcoats. Yes, I'm afraid so. This is the beginning of a long, long struggle. Well, I don't know what we're waiting for, then. Hmm? What do you mean? The box. This little box. The box? But you don't think... We've that... got to open it. 
You've got the key, Mr. Revere. Well, well, no. What are you doing? We've got to open this box and let out the revolution. Well, don't break it. Don't break the box. It's about time. There. Listen. Huh? Listen. What? I hear it. I hear it. I let out the revolution. Yes, Lodge Butterwick, I guess you did. And it was about time, too. I'm glad I did it. I reckon I just never realized before that I had to be a part of it. The new grown tree. Well, Mr. Revere, it was nice knowing you, but I'll have to be getting back to my farm now. Getting back to your farm? Uh Uh-huh. I got my pa's old flintlock hanging on the wall back there. I allow as I'll be needing it today, and maybe tomorrow. Maybe for a long time to come. So, goodbye, Mr. Revere. But what about your tooth? Oh, a tooth's a tooth, but a country's a country. And anyhow, Mr. Revere... It just now stopped aching. Adventure Ahead has presented the story A Tooth for Paul Revere by Stephen Vincent Benet in a radio dramatization written by Tom Goutte. Music was composed by Leo Kampinski and the orchestra was conducted by Henri Nosko. The entire production was under the direction of Joseph Mansfield. In today's play, the part of Lige Butterwick was played by John Thomas. Paul Revere was played by Roger DeCoven. Others in the cast were Kermit Murdoch, James Tunsey, Joseph Wiseman, Jackie Ayers, Eleanor Audley, Jean Gillespie, Fred Barron, and Paul Ford. NBC and its affiliated independent stations present Adventure Ahead as a Public Service. Did you know that in peacetime, 93% of all transportation in this country was by private automobile? Even today, it is estimated that four out of five war workers must depend on private cars to get them to their essential jobs. This is but one of the reasons why America's civilian and war production economy depends largely upon the continued operation of the nation's passenger automobiles. And now, here are some more statistics for you. At the beginning of the war, 27 million passenger cars were operating on America's highways. Today, the number of cars on the road has dwindled to a low of 24 million. And our stockpile of new vehicles has been reduced to less than 30,000, a pre-war three-day supply. Transportation experts estimate that if the total number of cars on the road drops to 20 million, a breakdown in essential transportation can be expected. If you have not operated in a carpool, start now. This is the National Broadcasting Company.